All right, welcome back to part three. We got the truck up in the air. It's very important if you um, do this transfer case service that you do get the transfer case primed afterwards. We have it up at all four corners. You've got to have four jack stands to do this correctly. I know there's some people out there that are probably gonna disagree with me and just put fluid in and go down the road. Very important that you do this step that we're about to show you. Um, we're gonna do a slow speed priming, then we're gonna speed it up, and then we're gonna go into four wheel drive high. So stay tuned, you got a lot to see today. This should be very interesting to see the four wheel drive system come back to life. One thing with this truck, it's very heavy. Don't skimp on your stands. These are two tons a piece. And having four of them meaning we have eight tons of support. Now this truck empty, since it is 2500, does weigh about 4700 pounds empty. I have verified that coming out of the dump. Uh, empty with a trailer. So sometimes it comes in at 5,200 with trailer, 48 empty, depending on how much gas, that kind of thing. 36 gallon tank, 320 pounds of fuel, and it can offset it. Not by that much. Other than that, you do want to start the vehicle up. You do want to let it warm up because these do have a high idle mode. And with the high idle mode, you do not want to be banging it in the gear. And another thing, once we do start this, we'll be putting it in drive one. Uh, mostly because you do not want the transmission running to about 30 to 40 miles an hour, whether you have the 4L60, 4L60E, or 4L80E like in this case. Alright, we're going to start it up, let it warm up, and then we'll start running our tests. We'll let it get to about 130, 140 degrees, so we'll be back here in a sec. Okay, now that we're up to operating temperature, put on the brake, put it in drive, then we're going to put it in gear one, make sure it's locked, and we're going to let the brake out. We're just going to let it idle here for a sec. And as we're doing this, and as you'll see in the footage, we're priming the transfer case. The pump is literally picking up fluid and pressurizing the case. We'll run this up to about 10 miles an hour. We'll just let it sit there for a minute. This procedure doesn't take very long. Then we'll apply the brakes. Then we'll keep doing this cycle a couple times. We don't want to go above 10 miles an hour while we're priming the case. It'll take it about 13 miles an hour. Put it in four wheel drive high. Now sometimes with this truck it is a little goofy. Sometimes I have to let the brake out. Sometimes it goes in pretty quick like it did there. We'll just let it idle there for a minute.
can actually feel it in the steering wheel. The steering wheel gets a little heavy when front wheels are under power. Okay, we'll speed it up. All right, so now we got transportation nice and lubed up. Let's see if she'll actually come out of four wheel drive high. All right, you just heard it let go there. Well, I tell you, that is impressive because before it used to take two miles. I'd actually have to shut the engine off and then come back to it. But as you heard that noise, the transfer case did let go. Now this is a shift on the fly transfer case. So, I mean, it's designed to be going down the road. I mean, my rule of thumb is I don't put it in four wheel drive high unless I'm doing below 25 miles an hour. But, you know, in some literature it does say this can go to full speeds, but I, I wouldn't try it. Alright, let's do that again. Wow, that's working good. Wow, I'm impressed. That's the best it's worked in about seven years. All right, let's kick it out. There we go. Well, I don't know about you folks, but uh, bad fluid. I can't tell you that uh, bad fluid or fluid change will fix your issues, but you know, if you're having a transfer case hang up like I was having, definitely worth a shot that is deck six that's in there so I gotta say I'm, I'm very happy um, there was no metal in the case and pretty much there's no metal in the fluids I'm, I'm happy like you know this thing has 178,000 miles it just keeps kicking like an old mule all right other than that uh, we're gonna put the cover back on and uh, call this one a wrap All right, well, everything checks out, and four-wheel drive works, disengages as it should, so bad fluid. It does happen. Other than that, good to go. Putting the cover back on, call this one a wrap. I like how it fixed the four-wheel drive problem. Yeah, I do too, because it was tough turning corners, even though it was out of four-wheel drive in the snow. It would still send power, and the one wheel would still turn. And you could feel it, and you could hear it too. You could hear the drive shaft spinning in the front because you can feel the load on the oh, engine. Oh, you can also hear whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, it does make kind of a wolf sound. It's how you know you're four-wheel drive with most Chevys. Well, even in your Dodge, I can hear it when a pop shaft's running in the front. Yeah, it's irritating as hell. But mine's a quick... Mine, actually, after I changed my fluid in my transfer case, everything was fine. Yeah, so it shows fluid can disintegrate even though it's not under direct heat. Maybe I'll get an extra mile per gallon. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Maybe once you, maybe once you uh, do, do the TBI injectors, the TBI injectors, and you do the TBI rebuild. Coming soon. Yeah, coming soon. Hopefully. Yeah, I got to track some parts down for that job. It's not as easy to get parts for a TBI as I thought. No, that and this one had three different versions of the 220. Hell, it's easier to get parts for a carburetor nowadays than it is a TBI unit. 
GM, dude. All right, I'm going to hit this. Go. Nope. When you hear chugga ugga dugga, stop. Oh, that's supposed to be funny. Or is it not chugga ugga? No, that's an air compressor. What would this be? Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. And here's the stop. You're not going any farther noise. Oh, yeah, the, brrr, the air compressor is chugga ugga dugga. If these spin, you're gonna have a bad time. We're good. All right, folks, as you can see, that fixed the four wheel drive issue we had. If you like this content, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, and P.S. More truck videos coming soon. <laughs> We're getting back into trucks. Uh, I've had enough of the cars for a while, so there you go. Alright, see you next time. Alright, so it's been about a month after we've done the service of the transfer case. It's good during the summertime to go out to a dirt road, show them our dirt road. You never want to do what I'm about to do on dry pavement. It will tear up your four wheel drive unit. It'll add, it'll add uh, damage to the drive line, uh, the hubs, transfer case, just something you don't want to do in the summertime. But anyway, during the summertime, it's a good time to go out once a month to get your four wheel drive back in good shape so it's ready for the winter time. Now, TLA has to warm up to push the fork forward, so we'll just kind of roll here. There we go. It's working good. <laughs> Feels much smoother. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, this road it's sucks. Bumpy. But that's the point. It's a dirt road. to go on pavement just be real easy on the gas and just creep through your corners I try to avoid sharp turns in four-wheel drive to get on it. Get it from, oh man. Yeah, three quarter ton trucks are not the best to bounce in. Yeah, honestly. All right, gonna take it out of four wheel drive now. Oh. Pulling off some torque. <laughs> but yeah, you can't m m match mom's horsepower. Nope, I got her beat on torque. <laughs> All right, so we going for another round or what? What are we doing?
because I'm still capturing the stick. I want to make sure it's on a four wheel drive. Okay. I'm trying to do just a little field test. Uh, better do it now before that human comes in. Okay. So that right there shows we were out of four wheel drive. Yikes. So the system is working good. <laughs> this is really bumpy. Yes, it is. All right. We're going to put it in one more time. All right. The other thing with the 241C is that it can be done while it's in gear. It's designed to do that. All right. We're going to do a little bit of slow speed articulation. There's a little bump over here. You can actually hear the prop shaft coming. So everything's working. Bump won't look like much on the camera, but it's pretty steep. <laughs> Watch our bottom out here. I've tried to take this truck mudding a couple times, and uh, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. We got stuck, and we managed to get out by by the bootstrap. <laughs> yep, I had just enough horsepower. Oh man, I'm trying to keep this as steady as possible. I'm sweating. <laughs> this, is, this is a sweaty job. I'm trying to keep it. Stable, especially in the summertime when it's been a hundred for the last two weeks. Yeah, you get used to it. And then winter comes. <laughs> I'm ready for winter. Oh crap! All right, we've exercised the transfer case here and put it back in four or too high. Alright, now it's in uh, too high? Too high. Alright. Now we can get back on pavement and in this video. Mm -hmm. Alright folks, hope you enjoyed the series on bringing your four-wheel drive back to life. we got more truck videos coming soon, so if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.